السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه إلى يوم الدين وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس إني رسول الله إليكم جميعا وقال تعالى النبي أولى بالمؤمنين من أنفسهم وأزواجه أمهاتهم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا نبي الأنبياء أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم حامدا ومصليا ومتوكلا على الله وبعد Respect the brothers, elders, and sisters in Islam. We thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us, embracing us, allotting us, providing us this opportunity to come today on this blessed and sacred day of Jum'ah to perform our Salat of Jum'ah. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming and may Allah reward us graciously, bountifully, and generously both in dunya and in akhirah. The greatest humans that came on earth were the Anbiya were the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But none of their complete history is recorded. Out of the galaxy of prophets, approximately 124,000 anbiya that came on earth only 25 by name are mentioned in the Quran. How many? From the galaxy. Of 124,000. Only the names of 25 are mentioned in the Quran. But even those 25 that are mentioned in the Quran, their complete whereabouts are not known. Their complete life is not known. The graves of some prophets are known, but not precisely and not with certainty. Where some of the Anbiya are buried are known, but not exactly. Their exact locations are not known. For example, the grave of Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, is known to be in the city of Khalil. The grave of Musa السلام, in Philistine. The grave of Harun السلام, the grave of Yusha السلام, the grave of Yaqub السلام, The graves of these Anbiya are known but not precisely, not with certainty. The only personality whose entire life from birth, nay, before birth, not only from birth, but before birth till death, 
from before birth, not after birth, from before birth till death. His every action is recorded and archived. Rasulullah s.a.w.'s blessed grave is known with preciseness. It is known with certainty. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed to perform hajj or umrah and have gone to Medina, you would know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's blessed qabr is in Medina, is in the hujrah where he passed away. That is known with preciseness and with certainty. Just as how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the responsibility to protect the entire Quran from any changes, as Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. In exactly the same manner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected the entire life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from pre-birth to death. His entire life, his every action, his every utterance is preserved and recorded. Whatever the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did even on one occasion, even on one occasion, during his life, that is also archived and recorded. You would protect and record every action of the one whom you love. Isn't that so? The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salam and the Habib of Allah as much as for every moment of time until time exists. This month in which we are in, we all know it is the month of Rabi al Awwal. The month of Rabi al Awwal is generally a month where Muslims across the globe express their sentiments of love and affection for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The poet said something amazing. The poet, he said something amazing. He said, after praising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have not elevated the rank of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with my poetry. After praising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in my poetry, I did not elevate the rank of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with my poetry, but on the reverse, my poetry has been elevated by his noble and blessed mention. SubhanAllah. My poetry has been elevated by the mere mention of the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He, the Nabi of Allah, was exalted by the very declaration of the Qur'an. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَ We have elevated your name. We see that in every second in the world, in the Adhan, when the Adhan is called out, what do we hear? Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Don't we hear that? Five times a day, but in every second, whether day or night, the blessed and noble name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being elevated. <coughs> there were three main events that occurred in Rabi al Awwal. Three main events in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First was his blessed birth. 
his arrival into this world. The second was his hijrah, which commenced in the beginning of Rabi al Awwal and culminated on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal. And the third was the demise and the passing of Rasulullah from this dunya. So let me tell you something. There are differences of opinion as to the day Rasulullah was born. Not the month. It is unanimously agreed Rasulullah was born in Rabi al Awwal. But there are over 8 to 10 different opinions whether the Nabi of Allah was born on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal or not. There is no differences of opinion regarding the demise of the Prophet ﷺ on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal. Rasulullah passed away on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal, and this is unanimously agreed by historians. But regarding his birth, some say he was born on the 2nd of Rabi al Awwal, some say he was born on the 8th of Rabi al Awwal. Some say he was born on the 10th of Rabi al Awwal. Some say he was born on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal. But they all agreed whether it was the 8th or the 10th or the 2nd or the 12th, it was on a Monday. It was what? On a Monday. Rasulullah was born on a Monday. He reached Medina on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal, it was on a Monday. He passed away sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal and it was on a Monday. Were all these coincidental? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked as to why he would fast on a Monday. And the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the answer that he gave is a sahih hadith. He was asked as to why he would fast on a Monday. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it was the day I was born. Huh? It was the day I was born. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that every Monday and every Thursdays, our amals and our deeds of the week are presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I prefer that my deeds be presented before Allah while I am fasting. I prefer that my deeds be presented before Allah while I am fasting. That is why it is sunnah to fast on Mondays and Thursdays. So, Rasulullah said, I was born on a Monday. Revelation came to me on a Monday. When the Nabi of Allah was in Dar al Jibreel came to him with the first revelation. It was on a Monday. After 193 days in Medina, one day the commence came of, of the tahwil of the Qibla, the changing of the Qibla, the direction of the changing of the Qibla. It came at the time of Asir. And the day this command came, do you know which day it was? It was on a Monday. The command of Tahweel al Qibla, the changing of the Qibla, was on a Monday. The order to fast in Ramadan came 27 days after that, which was also on a Monday. The first decisive battle of Islam that was fought, the Battle of Badr, was fought on a Thursday. Nine years and 42 days later, nine years and 42 to be exact days later, the Prophet's last son, Ibrahim, Ibrahim radiallahu anhu, was born on a Monday. Hajjatul Wada, the Prophet's Hajj that he did, took place on a Thursday. Right? Arafat, we know, was on a Friday. And spot on, 93 days after that, 
93 days after the Hajj of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. He left this world and it was on a Monday. So there is no doubt that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born on a Monday. But when it comes to the 12th of Rabi al Awal, there are differences of opinion whether the Prophet was born on the 12th of Rabi al Awal or not. The status of Rasulullah is higher than the status of anyone. Of anyone. He was the paragon of Allah's creation. What Allah says in the Quran. Allah says, "Al-Nabiyu awla bil mu'minin min anfusihim." Al-Nabiyu awla. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is closer to the believers even than their own selves. What Allah is saying, "Al-Nabiyu awla bil mu'minin min anfusihim." The Nabi of Allah is closer to us even than our own own selves. ثَلَاثَةٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ حَلَاوَةُ الْإِيمَانِ If three things we possessed in life, if we possess three things, then we will taste the sweetness of Iman. The first of which, أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَى That Allah and His Rasul is more beloved to a person than any other thing in this world. More beloved. We cannot have complete Iman. Our Iman cannot reach Kamal until Hubbullah and Hubbul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more to us than the Hub and the love of anyone else in the world. When the Sahabi, wow, there was the name of the Sahabi by the name of Khubayy radiallahu anhu. Khubayy. What is the name? Khubayr radiallahu anhu. When he was captured and he was about to be executed. He was captured and he was about to be executed. One of the leaders of the Quraysh, Ghaliban Abu Sufyan, he asked him, O oh Khubayr, do you wish that your Nabi was in your place and you be standing in your own house as a free man? Do you wish this, that you are now about to be executed? Do you wish that Rasulullah be here and you be a free man? If we were given this choice, then think about it. What would have been our answer? And here, what, what was his answer? He was asked, do you want to switch? Do you want to swap? Hear what he said. Khubayr radiallahu anhu said, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, I would rather die multiple deaths. I would rather die multiple deaths than a thorn, than a thorn pricking the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I would rather die multiple deaths than a thorn pricking the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Suhail bin Amr, he said, I have visited kings and emperors and rulers. But when he saw the behavior of Sahaba with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went back to the Quraysh and he said, O oh people of Quraysh, Wallahi, I have never seen any group of people who love and respect their leader like I have seen the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loving and respecting him. We love our Rasul because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him. We love him because Quran came down upon him. We love him because he embodied, he embodied the perfection of the humanity. We love him because he was sent as a mercy to all mankind. His kindness upon us are enormous. We love him because he loved us. 
We love him because he loved us. And we want to tell the world also that we love our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There were people in his life who always opposed him and his mission. And Quran tells us when this had happened, Allah says, Just turn you away from your scoffs. Don't pay attention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about those people who mocked him several times. Mocked him several times. Allah says to the Nabi of Allah, Fasfah is safh al jameel. O Nabi, O my Nabi, overlook their scuffing beautifully. Overlook their mocking you with a beautiful manner, in a beautiful manner, in a beautiful conduct. How you should be here with them? Wasbir ala ma yakulun, wahjuruhum hajran jamila. Forgive them with a beautiful forgiveness. Don't stoop to their level, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In fa'abillaji hi ahsan. Return harshness with that which is better. And the one who dislikes you will end up loving you. This is what had happened. Those who despise and dislike the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ended up loving him. Ended up loving him. With his beautiful interaction, even his assassins became his biggest fans. Wow. With his beautiful interaction, even his assassins, they became his biggest fans. Once there were some people, they came to Medina, and they were mocking the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they were winking their eyes at each other, making derogatory gestures, right? At the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they would say, instead of saying, As-salamu alaykum, instead of saying, As-salamu alaykum, they would say, As-salamu alaykum. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا حُيِّيْتُمْ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا When you greet someone, greet them properly. The ayat in Surah Al-Mujadala. These people would not greet the Prophet ﷺ properly because they were, their intentions were to make mockery at him. And you know what's the meaning of As-salamu alaykum? As-salamu alaykum means peace be unto you. But As-salamu alaykum means may death comes upon you. May what? May you die. May death comes upon you. So, Rasulullah in a very nice, humble, gently manner would say, Wa alaykum. But he would say, Wa alaykum. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she heard this manner from the, those people that they were mocking at the Prophet, she got very upset. How can you dare address the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that manner? So behind the curtain, she said, Wa alaykum as-salam, wa ghadab Allah alaykum wa la'anat Allah. May death be upon you, and may the curse of Allah be upon you, and may the anger of Allah be upon you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to her and he said, Oh Aisha, have you ever seen me being vulgar? Have you ever heard me using a nasty word? Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha said no. So he said, oh Aisha, why did you behave in this manner? Why were you saying, may Allah curse them and may Allah's anger be upon them? She said, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were scoffing and making mockery of you and I could not take it anymore. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, oh Aisha, didn't you hear my reply to them? Didn't you hear my reply to them? What did I say? Wa alaykum. Whatever you are telling me, back to you. But in what manner? We can be condescending, but we can send the same message at the same time with different mannerism, right? 
We don't have to stoop to the level of others, but we can get the, uh, we, 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 can, we, we can send the same message in a very nice manner, like the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the seal of prophets. Allah sends prophets to every nation, to every tribe, to every community. As Allah says, Every nation, every society, every people, prophets came to. Every ummah that came before, they had a warner with them. They had a warner with them. And every prophet that came, there was this consolation that after I am gone, there will be another prophet to come after me. Right? There will be another prophet to come after me. Finally, the pride of Allah's creation, that nabuwa, that prophethood, which differed from every other prophethood, that nabuwa and that prophethood which transcended the barriers of race, nationality, color, creed, which transcended the boundaries of time. Wow. That nabuwa that transcended even the boundaries of time and place. What Allah says, Tabarak al-Ladhi nazzal al-furqan ala abnihi liyakuna lil-alameen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a Nabi to every alam ever exists. Every galaxy, every planet, every world that ever exists. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a Nabi to them. Qul ya ayyuhal nas, inni Rasulullah ilaykum jami'a. Universal Prophet. Not only to a human being, his nabuwa was also to jinn kind. What Allah says in the Quran. Wa idh sarafna ilayka nafaram min al jinni yastami'oon al Quran. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was made in Nabi to even an animate and inanimate objects. Animate and inanimate objects. In Uhud, you know, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seriously injured, where did he take the Sahaba? Where did he, they, they took refuge? They went up on the mountain of Uhud. And Alhamdulillah, I had a chance to see that place precisely. I went to that area. The place that the Prophet ﷺ took refuge on, that portion of the mountain, it is said. Mountains are very hard rocks, right? But that, that's an inanimate object. It became soft. It became soft like a cushion. And embraced the Prophet ﷺ as if he was leaning on a cushion. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Ali anhu narrates, Mastaqbala hajar, wala shajar, wala madar, illa qala assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pass by a rock, a stone, a tree, a heap of sand, and they would greet the Nabi of Allah with assalamu alaykum. What did the Nabi of Allah say? Ana Nabi al Anbiya. No other Prophet said this. I was sent even as a Prophet to the galaxies of Prophets. I was sent as a Prophet to even the other Prophets. Ana Nabi al Anbiya. Right? Rasulullah sallallahu he was sent even to animals. He was sent. His Nubuwa was even to animals. One shepherd. He was looking after his flock. A wolf came by and attacked this flock. So this shepherd, he repelled the wolf. When he repelled the wolf, the wolf spoke. Have you ever heard of an animal speaking? He repelled the wolf and the wolf spoke. What did the wolf say? He said, Fear Allah, do not become an obstacle between me and my rizq. The, 
And that the wolf is telling the shepherd, the wolf came to attack the sheep, right? The fear of Allah, don't become an obstacle between me and my reason. So the shepherd was shocked. He was amazed and he said, how can this be possible that an animal, a wolf, is, is, is talking the language of a human being? How is this possible? It was shocking to him. So the wolf talked again. The wolf said again, This seems amazing to you, hearing me talking. This seems shocking to you. But should I tell you something that is much more amazing than that? Should I tell you something that is much more amazing than you hear me talking? So the shepherd said, what can be more amazing than that? So the wolf told him, and you, you are more amazing than what you have heard just now. Me? How is that so? So the wolf is saying, behind this mountain, the, the greatest Nabi of Allah was sent, and you are here, busy attending to your animals? Why don't you go and listen to him what he has to say? The last Nabi, the greatest Nabi, he is here and you are here attending to your animals. Go and listen to him. So the, wolf, the, the shepherd said, if I go and I leave my flock, maybe when I come back I won't find any because you are here. The wolf said to him, you go and you listen to him when you come back, you will see your flock being intact. It will not be harmed. I will take care of your flock. Can you trust a cat with milk? Huh? Can you say, okay, I'm putting a bowl of milk and the cat says, okay, you go and you come back and find that bowl of milk or cheese? It's not going to happen. Huh? It's not going to happen. So the shepherd said, are you promising me? He said, yes, I'm promising you. So he went and he listened to the Prophet and he accepted Iman. He became a Muslim. After he accepted Islam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going back to my flock. You know what the Nabi of Allah told him? Rasulullah did not know what transpired between him, the wolf, and his flock. But Rasulullah is telling him, when you go back, you will see your flock being unharmed. Nothing will happen to them. International law international law that from the ummah of Adam alayhi salam to Isa alayhi salam we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran man jaa bil hasana falahu ashru amthaliha when you do one good deed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala credits you with ten hasanat man jaa bil hasana falahu ashru amthaliha this is an international law but is this the same for this ummah? Is this the same for this ummah? One to ten? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Allah, he made dua, oh Allah, this is not enough for my ummah. Ya Rab zid ummati. Oh Allah, reward them more for their actions. One to ten is not enough. This is for the previous people. Ya Allah, zid ummati. Give them more for their good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَاعِفُهُ عَضْعَافًا كَثِيرًا You lend a loan to Allah, Allah will reward you what? Multiple times. Not one to ten, multiple times. Is this enough? Our system said, no, this is not enough. زِدْ أُمَّتِي If Allah give them more. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَمَّتَتْ سَنَابِلَ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Is 700 to 1 okay? Is 700 to 1 okay? They do one good deed, they have 700 that? Is that okay? As the Prophet said, no. زِنْ أُمَّتِي What a Nabi Allah has given to us. What a Nabi! Ah. So Allah revealed the ayah إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ You have sabr and you have patience which is a good deed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you without measure Allah will give you without measure Every Nabi that came 
They had a special dua that was given to them to make for their ummah or against their ummah. Every enemy. Allah had given them a special dua for them either to make for their ummah or against their ummah. Some Nabi used that dua in favor of their ummah and some Nabi used the dua against their ummah. Rasulullah was also given this special dua. And he said, he was told, would you make this dua for your ummah? Would you make this dua for your ummah? Rasulullah says, yes. I will make this dua for my ummah, but not in dunya. Not in dunya. I will make this special dua for my ummah in akhirah. And you know what could that dua be? The dua of shafa'ah. The dua of intercession. Where the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would beg Allah and intercede before Allah for this ummah. Subhanallah. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came home and Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha noticed some happiness from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face. I don't know how many of you have ever heard about the physical description of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How was his physical appearance? Many people don't talk about this. Inshallah, sometime I will. It is mind-boggling. Sahaba. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had so much awe in him that Sahaba could not look at him in his face when they would speak to him. They would lower their gaze. Huh? Ibn As radiallahu anhu, he said, when he accepted Islam, if someone would ask me to describe the feature of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I would not be able to do so. I would not be able to do so. The, 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 the ajal sahaba the kibar of sahaba the elderly of sahaba whenever they would speak to the Nabi of Allah, they would not look at him in his eyes. But the, most of the sifat of Rasulullah that are mentioned by sahaba and his description, his physical description, are given by the younger sahaba. Not the elderly sahaba. This teaches you respect, right? Teaches you respect. So Rasulullah face used to beam with this celestial light. So he came home and said, Aisha radiallahu anha noticed that this Nabi of Allah's face is beaming. He is happy. Something made him happy. So she said, okay, I'm going to capitalize on this opportunity today. You know, sometimes, I don't know about many of the husbands that are here, when you go home, if you are a little bit happy, and your wife looks at you and they see you happy, do they ask you for things? Do they ask you for things? Sisters, you should ask them. Likewise, the other way. And if they do, give it to them. This is from the Sunnah. This is from the Sunnah. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, she saw the Nabi of Allah happy. She said, I'm going to ask him today. But what did she ask him for? She said, oh, I want a new house. Change the curtain of the house. I want a new car. No. She said, I will ask the Nabi of Allah to make dua for me today. Wow. What did she ask for? Dua. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for her and he said, Allahumma gfir li Aisha. Ma taqaddamat min dhanbiha wa ma taakharat wa ma asarrat wa ma a'lanat. Oh Allah, forgive all the sins of Aisha. Her past sins, her future sins, her minor sins, her major sins. Forgive all her sins. Coming from the lips of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is there any doubt that that would not be accepted? Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, she heard that and she was ecstatic. She was elated. She was filled of energy. She was beaming. Wow, look at the dua that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made for me. And her reaction was out of happiness. She was rolling. She was rolling. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam observed her reaction. And he said, oh Aisha, why are you like this? He said, oh Nabi of Allah, you made such a dua for me. This gives me happiness. This gives me joy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Aisha, listen to this brothers. Listen to this carefully. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Aisha, you are happy because of this dua that I made for you now? And this is, look at your reaction. Let me tell you. I make the same dua that I have just made for you. 
I make the same du'a five times a day for every one of my ummati and their progeny. Would this make you tear? Our Nabi made the same du'a for me and you five times a day for us and our progeny. Wow! Wow! Ra'uf al-Rahim. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Ra'uf al-Rahim. I'm going to conclude because of time. You know, popularity can be measured by the number of hits a person gets. In this time, and this age we are living in, you know, we are living in times of YouTube hits, uh, number of views, Facebook, clips, Twitter, the amount of followers you get. Uh, on these things. Now listen to this carefully. This is mind-boggling, right? Anyone will acknowledge that if a person gets one billion hits in a day, isn't that phenomenal? It is phenomenal to get one, one billion hits in a day, in one day. To get one billion hits every day of the year, to get that every day of the year is extraordinary. Extraordinary. But for the same personality to get this constantly for hundreds of years, hundreds of years is nothing short than a miracle. Nothing short than a miracle. It's breath with a breathtaking margin. Mere maths will fail to calculate all of that. Let me give you a simple estimation. Let's say there are 5% of Muslims in the world that pray 5 Salah. I'm just giving a number out. 5% of Muslims in the world today that pray 5 Salah. This is a total of 3 million people. 3 million. 5% Muslims, 3 million who praise Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at a minimum of 19 times a day in their salah alone. If you pray your father alone, 19 times a day in their salah. That is 5.7 billion hits a day. 5.7 billion times Rasulullah is being praised a day. Only if you say salah, uh, no sharif in your salah. What about those people who send Salah to Salam on him every day? What about those people who go to Medina and send Salah to Salam by the Qabr of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What about on the day of Jummah? How many people send Salah to Salam on our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What about the, those students who study in the Madaris, in the schools, and they study the books of Hadith? And in every Hadith that comes, you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. Look how many times a day our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being praised. Whoever recites the Lord once on the Nabi of Allah, Allah will bless him with five favors. And I will conclude. Allah will bless you with five favors. Say salatu wa salam on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Five favors. First, Allah will credit you with ten hasanat. Allah will, second, Allah will forgive ten of your sins. Number two. Number three, Allah will raise your rank ten times in Jannah. Allah will raise your rank ten times in Jannah. Number three, Allah will descend seventy portions of His mercies upon you. How many? Seventy portions of Allah's mercy will be descended upon you, descend down upon you. And lastly, Allah's angel will seek Allah's forgiveness for a person seventy times. If you send salatu salam ala nabi once, you get these five favors. Now, this month of Rabi'ul Awal, just do me a favor. You want this month to be prosperous? I am only going to ask you, look at the sunnah of the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and take three sunnah. Just practice three sunnah of the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Put it in your life in this Rabi'ul Awal until next year. And wallahi, wallahi, I will tell you, you have Praise the Nabi of Allah, you have fulfilled the haqq. Take three sunnah that you are not been practicing. Look at the life of the Prophet and put it in your life. 
Just don't listen and listen to talks and talk. No, implementation, practical implementation. Just three. Look for three sunnah. And the life of the Prophet ﷺ that is not in my life and your life, and make the azam and the intention of putting that in your life. And this Rabbi al-Awwal, insha'Allah, and you will see the difference. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us genuine love for our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will be with those whom we love in the Akhirah. And inshallah, we will be with our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of our love for him. Uh, there are some announcements quickly. One is November 9th, Saturday, which is tomorrow. Uh, they're having a program here at the Miami Gardens Masjid regarding Sirat and Nabi program because we are in the month of Rabi Awal. Something like what you have heard today. Uh, the speaker will be the Imam for the Masjid, Dr. Samra, and it will be at 7 p.m. And uh, second is 16th, the 16th of November, which is next Saturday. There will be another event of the same kind, Milad and Nabi, but this will be for the Urdu speaking people. Right? It'll be for those who speak Urdu. So the English pe English speaking people, yours is tomorrow. Right? And for next week is for the Urdu speaking people, inshallah. Um, Masjid as Sunday school is organizing Fajr Namaz at the beach. Uh, apart from Salah, you will participate in beach cleanup and, and with potluck, breakfast. It is Saturday, November 16th at 5 45 a.m. at the Hollywood Beach. Um, I don't know the logistics of this, you can uh, talk to the respective people. Um, Saturday, November 7th, this is December, now 7th, next month, Al Hikma service invites you and your family to an uh, Islamic event of songs in Arabic, Urdu, and English. Uh, the Darul Hall, inshallah, and admission is $10 per person. The City of Miami Gardens is conducting a survey for the residents of the city. The survey is to assess your experience as a diabetic or pre diabetic patient. Just going to take 15 minutes and you might also get a $20 gift card after you participate in this survey. Um, Brother Eid Iyan Yusuf Shahada uh, passed away in Venezuela. Thank you all for him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him. He was a regular Musali here at this Masjid in the 2000, I think 2004, 2005. Uh, so the mother-in-law of uh, Mr. Tahir Ismail passed away in Pakistan, inshallah. Please make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her the little to and forgive her, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can go ahead and, oh, there is something else here. Um, to be, be, a, be a census taker, we have some people out there, uh, you can see them uh, regarding this. To be a census taker, to participate. Maybe you can um, uh, volunteer or give your names if they're, they're standing outside there on the table. Please volunteer for that, too, inshallah. Thank you.